Good morning, folks. It's 9 a.m. on the first Tuesday of the month, and so it's time to call to order the City and State's Plus Council meeting. I'm Sherry Barr, District 5 representative and Mayor Pro Tem. In the absence of our Mayor, Jonathan McCaller, I'll be presiding over our meeting this morning. As always, we begin with an invocation followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. This morning, we call on Council Member Fina Smack to provide our invocation. By your hands. Dear Lord, I come to you in prayer for the city of Statesboro. Grant us the wisdom to make the best decisions for the city. Grant us your peace. May your guidance be present today in this meeting and always. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> the first thing on our agenda this morning, we have a recognition um, for the Harbor Day Proclamation. And it's my great pleasure to read this proclamation, and then we'll have a staff member accept the framed proclamation, and then we'll recognize the tree board and KSBB to come up for a picture. You know, it's easy for folks to think that um, trees are just pretty, and that those of us who love them and champion them are, are kind of fuzzy-headed romantics. But actually, trees are so important to the quality of life for all of us here. Without our mature trees, we don't have clean water and clean air. So I'm happy to read this and to again this year recognize Arbor Day. <coughs> Whereas, in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees and whereas the holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska, and whereas Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world, and whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our topsoil by wind and water, lower our heating and cooling cost, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce oxygen, provide habitat for wildlife, and whereas trees are a renewable resource, giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products, and whereas trees in our city increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas and beautify our community. And whereas trees in our city, <clears throat> wherever they are planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. Now, therefore, I, Sherry Barr, Mayor Pro Tem of the City of Statesboro, do hereby proclaim February 17, 2023, as Arbor Day. In the city of Statesboro, and I encourage all citizens to celebrate Arbor Day and to support efforts to protect our trees and our woodlands. Further, I encourage all citizens to plant and care for trees to gladden our hearts and promote the well-being of our and future generations. Thank you. And so if you will, please, Marco Strejo is going to come and receive the proclamation, and then we'll invite the tree board up for a photograph of it. Good morning, 
Over here, Wes. Come on. Can you see? Yeah. Feel that hole right there. Can you tilt the proclamation down just a bit up that way? Ready? One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One more. One, two, three. Okay. Can we okay. just keep the tree board in place? Let's keep it. I want one with them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the tree board. Okay. Um, we need some people on this side. Jim, we need to slide over a little bit too. Okay. Okay. Ready? One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, wait. One second. One, two, three. Do you want one without me? Yeah, you say, you say you want one. I'm going to transfer it. Put the proclamation down a little bit there. Got it there. One, two, three. That's it again. One, two, three. One, two, three. Let me take another one with it a little bit lower. It's covering your face. One, two, three. Got it? Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. I got it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Regarding membership of the States for Business Commission. So, Kane, you want to remind us? Sure, I'm Madam Mayor Pro Tem. This is brought forward as a second reading of the revision to Section 285, which is um, which is regarding the membership of the Statesboro Business Commission. What this amendment would do is increase the membership from seven to nine and also remove the Chamber of Commerce member nomination option. 
first reading was conducted and moved forward to second reading at last council meeting on January 17th, 2023. Thank you. So this is our second reading, and if it passes, it becomes part of our ordinance. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the um, ordinance as amended? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor by aye, please. Aye. aye. Thank you. So it has passed and has become part of the ordinance, the amendments. Next on our agenda is a public hearing and consideration of a motion to approve a package distilled spirits location reservation. This is for the GATA Gata package uh, on Tormento Way. <coughs> Can we have a motion, please, to open our public hearing on that? So moved. A second. A second. All in favor, aye. 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 Thank you. <coughs> First, we check with the different departments of the city to see if there are any further comments or problems with the application on this field, planning and zoning. No issue. Thank you. Uh, Chief Broadhead, no Mr. Representative. Mm -hmm. No issues. Thank you. Uh, and our city attorney. Uh, no issues. Thank you. And do we have folks here to speak for this application? If so, please rise and identify yourself. Do we have anyone here to speak against the request for this reservation location? Okay. Hearing none, do we have a motion or anyone else to speak for the either for or against? Um, then do we have a motion to close the hearing? So moved. Second. Second. And all in favor signify by aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, any discussion from the council? Madam Mayor Pro Tem. Just say to, to the council that this, you've already approved this one time. Uh, it expired. Uh, when you establish a reservation, you give them a six month period. That first one expired, and so it's the same application. Uh, they're just renewing it so they have six more months to get things in order, and then they would have an additional six months to, to actually have a building either in place if they're not going into an existing building there are no conflicts uh, and so we do recommend the approval thank you mr penny <clears throat> this is out beside the near new Publix, yes but it's the distance it needs to be away from the college yes how many extensions do we give them it's up to y'all i mean okay that's just so we can discuss it at another meeting but that's a concern for me okay yeah. Well, is this an extension or is this, this just is another really, application? This is, this is another another reservation. The first one expired. They didn't move on that. that so, if moment. somebody else had put in an application the day after this expired, they would have that spot. They could. Okay. But now it's, we're treating it as a brand new application, yes. so they get six months again. Initially, and, and I say initially, when you first opened up the uh, process, um, we thought we were going to have a second one, and. We actually had someone that came in and initiated the discussion, and I don't know if they actually put in the application, but that one never they, developed. They didn't have control of the property. Right, and they didn't develop. So this one, you did approve, and again, I didn't move forward, but a lot of things were under construction at that time, so uh, this reservation may be more appropriate at this time. Well, and to um, um, just address Councilman Chambers, or Councilman Chambers, is, uh, a concern this is something similar we would do with a, uh, a building permit right if you give an issue the building permit you don't do anything for what is it six nine months you yeah, have to come fine. back yeah. and get another one right yeah. so this is a similar process and, and we just didn't give them an extension they paid the initial fee that expired they had to repay another fee in order to submit this application so i for you mm -hmm. it's the owner here no. Okay, any further discussion? And if not, do we have a motion to approve or disapprove? Motion to approve. Thank you. Second. Second. All in favor, please signify by raised hands and say an aye. 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 Thank you. So the motion passes for the location reservation. Um, next, we have a motion to approve resolution 2023-03. This is a resolution pledging to practice and promote civility in the city of Statesboro. Um, I'm, I'm really pleased about it. This is something that was originated at GMA, the Georgia Municipal Association, 
we, they, they provide lots of resources to us in cities across the, the state. Um, and so it's a pledge that we are going to treat one another respectfully and model the kinds of behavior that we hope happen all over Statesboro and all over our country as we can respectfully disagree, have hearty debates, but do it without attacking personalities. So, um, do we have a motion to approve the, this resolution? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, please signify by raised hands and aye. 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 Thank you. Happy to say it passes unanimously. I neglected to mention that um, John Riggs is unable to be with us this morning, but may join momentarily on, uh, on, on Zoom. Next, we have a motion to approve resolution 2023-04. This is a resolution requesting approval to apply for an assistant to firefighters grant for the city of Statesboro. And this is pretty routine. We do it every year. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Uh, just simply to say, it does require a match of about ten, uh, about eleven thousand two hundred dollars. Uh, this grant would allow us to continue our uh, fire department uh, physician program, uh, which. I guess this is our third year. It'll be our going, going in, yes, going into the third year. Uh, but it has been a great value to our uh, fire department, and and I'll say the rest of the city is we've been able to to gain some advantage and knowledge from Dr. Gervis as well. And then the other one would um, be to assist with um, the breathing apparatus. Uh, uh, as part of a system that is very important to the safety of our firefighters. So we recommend that you authorize us to um, submit the grant as a this process. Thank you. Um, anything to add, Chief Grounds? No, ma'am. You're endorsing and that's good. Thank you. So do we have any discussion or a motion to approve the um, applying for this grant? So move. Thank you. A second? Second. All in favor, please signify by raised hands and eyes. Aye. Aye. Thank you. So in my dual role today, I get to vote as well as chair the meeting. Next on our agenda, item number 10, we have a motion to, we're asking for a motion to uh, a resolution 2023-05. This is a resolution approving acceptance of proceeds of a 2023 Georgia Power Company volunteer group, Citizens of Georgia Power Chapter Grant. Uh, member of Tim and members of the council, uh, again, it's a grant come from some volunteers from the uh, citizens of Georgia Power, uh, and they want to this these funds to be used to uh, further enhance our um, community garden uh, and assist with uh, building some additional raised beds. Uh, so last year was the first year we actually had the community garden, and, and we were late into the season, but the good thing is we're getting this money early enough that hopefully our citizens will, will see more participants uh, in the uh, community garden, but this will help us construct more uh, raised beds for our community garden. And so we recommend acceptance of the funds. Thank you, Mr. Penny. Any other questions or discussion? Okay, do we have a motion to approve accepting the grant? So moved. And a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor, please signify by raised hands and aye. Thank you. It passes unanimously. Uh, next on our agenda, item number 11, consideration of a motion to approve resolution 2023-06. This is a resolution approving acceptance of grants from the Georgia Department of Transportation for the Creek on the Blue Mile Project. Tell us more, Mr. Pinnock. Uh, Mayor, members, Mayor Pertemi, members of the council, uh, you approved us to submit the grant application for these funds and this, when we say Creek on the Blue Mile, this is, these are actually funds that will be used to help improve the park area of the um, project. Uh, and so we do recommend you accept the funds. The good thing is uh, the funds don't have to be expended until uh, the end of 2026. So we still have time. So it's, uh, it's not like th that we have to spend it tomorrow. The other thing is that it does require a match of about a, a little bit over a half million dollars, and we can use the Chief Alone funds as that match. Uh, so we would, and so what we would do, we're seeking additional funds to assist with that project, but this is more geared toward the park side versus the actual creek uh, itself, uh, and we recommend approval. Thank you, sir. Any discussion? 
Yes, Mr. Uh, Penny, what does this uh, obligate us to if we accept these funds? What are, what are we obligated to do with the funds? It's to improve the park. It's for land, and I won't say whatever those elements of the park, um, that's what these funds have to be used for. It's not inside the ditch. It's for whatever the improvements <coughs> to that park will be. Which haven't really been determined. They really haven't been determined. Uh, we put together some elements of what would be included in the park, uh, but that has yet to really be defined in, in its entirety. So what we're really sort of doing is sort of thanking the funds for for the future uh, in, improvement of that facility, of that area. Where are your comments? Yeah. We, don't, we don't have the money together for the whole creek of the blue mile. We're still, we've got some sources got and we're still... We yeah, haven't even approved it. the project. Right, right. And, we, and we're still designing the project. So you're going to be getting an update probably in the month of March or April. Uh, right now, you just received a 30% um, um, you, we're, we're at the 30% mark back in last year. And so at the next report, you should be at 60% of the completion of the design of the project. Thank you, sir. At, at what point, Mr. Penny, are we going to decide to move forward or not with that project? Because, I mean, we seem to be expending a lot of money on designing a project that, that may not generate the economic development benefit that we think it will. Well, well I, the construction prices have gone up and the size of the project has gone down. Right. Since the report, even. Well, I believe that at some point you will get to a place but I think we have to finish the design first and then there's another side of the project that we're not actually paying for uh, uh, there's a part of the project for the private development and at some point in the in this this year uh, the council should be receiving a presentation from uh, the Blue Mile Foundation to show you what uh, uh, the thoughts are for the actual development uh, of, of that area and what it would add to the area. Um, what, what we have to remember about this project is the first thing, this is a stormwater management project. That's the piece that the city's dealing with. Uh, but beyond the stormwater management project, we're actually also looking at, um, we're, we're reducing the, the, flood, the floodway we're taking property out of the floodway, and that's what this project also does. Very little. It will increase. It will increase the um, amount of land that would be available for development. Very little land, comparatively to the cost of the project. Okay. But but again, we will come back to you. And at any point, this council, if you decide today that you want to pull the plug on this, you could. Um, but but we've invested quite a bit of money. Uh, we are right now using a grant. We spend mostly grant money. At this We're point. using grant money. Uh, at this point, uh, you have a line of credit of fifteen point five million dollars, uh, and you had to use you had to use some of that money. So what we did, and this was the first year that I was here, I think we borrowed about fifteen thousand dollars or less. We had to activate give me, the loan. Give me, give me the number, Cindy. It was just over six thousand that we borrowed. And that was to activate the loan, correct? Otherwise, yes, we would have lost it. Yeah, we had to activate yeah. the loan, uh, and so so we have those funds. But before before I recommend you move forward, um, I have to know uh, without a shadow of a doubt first how we pay for it, and then the other the other side of it would be um, there's going to be some debt, and how we pay that debt, uh, and so all of those things will be factors. But none of that we'll know until we actually finish the design of the project. And at this point, it's all being paid for by a grant. So other than staff time, um, we're not expending yeah. a lot of city funds. Mm -hmm. We're using those grant funds that uh, this group of volunteers were able to get from the outgoing governor um, prior to 2019. Well, I just, and the reason I bring this up is Councilwoman Barr mentions we go to GMA and we take these classes. I sat in the water resources class and the original design for this project was that we were creating a reservoir to create groundwater storage for us, right? That 
portion has been completely removed from the project. And as a result, the economic benefit and the water management benefit has significantly decreased. Not to mention the fact our own engineering has looked at the 1970 flood map and looked at today's flood map. And the efforts we have already made with stormwater have had significant effects on the size of that floodplain as our own engineering department. So it, at some point we have to, and construction costs have gone up 30 to 40% for this kind of construction. I mean, look at all those cranes along the I-16. It is going to be expensive to do infrastructure projects now much more than it was two years ago. So with those three things in mind, there's no, there's no reservoir. The floodplain is uh, benefit is greatly reduced, and the costs have gone up by nearly forty percent. So at some point, we got to say, we got to stop spending staff resources and time on something that would be a, quite frankly, a very bad investment. I mean, we're looking at spending thirty to forty million dollars for a ten million dollar, uh, ten million dollars in receipts over thirty years. That was what the economic report stated. And that was before the cost of, it, of, of construction went up by 40%. So now we're looking at 30 to 35 million for a $10 million return over 30 years. That is a terrible investment. No financial person <laughs> would make that investment. No one in here would make that investment. Would you give $10, $30 to get 10 back? No, no one would. So we have to decide at some point if, if this is really a project that we want to sink so much of the city's resources. And and they the Blue Mile Committee even came to the SCBB and they want part of the hotel motel tax now too. So they want hotel motel tax, stormwater, T SPLOS, SPLOS, TAD money, and money from the general fund. How much more money are we going to put into this project? So did you have a specific proposal or suggestion at this point, Mr. Boyle? At some point we're going to have to look at it and go, this is really nice, but it's not feasible. I see. Yeah. And so or we have to vote to move forward, and, and I can stop talking about it because we've made a decision as a council. But I would also say to you, uh, I believe you need to see the planning that is going on on the private side. At this point, you haven't seen that. And, and, and at some point, um, that will be shared with you. Uh, the the impact of the uh, revision of the, the flood maps is important. Mm -hmm. uh, it is important, and um, we need to be able to, because as long as property is currently in the floodway, and we do have property that is currently in the floodway, but by being able to revise those flood maps and pull the floodway back, that land then becomes developed. Yes. Uh, and, but I think right now we're still in the design process uh, and and there is some work that is going on on the reservoir portion uh, but but it, there is no reservoir again there is there is a design that is going on with anticipation of a reservoir and to a, to a certain point all of that will come out when we get further into uh, the, the the project but um, at this point, again, and I'll say this to you, if this council decided today that you want to stop the project, all you have to do is say that. Uh, that's all you have to say. Uh, but at this point, we are spending grant funds, uh, and a lot of folks are doing a lot of work uh, to, to, with the thought that this is going to uh, help um, improve that corridor. Uh, and and the, the economic impact study did say that there was about an $80 million economic impact. Economic impact is not the same as return on investment. Okay. 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 But it, okay. It, it's not the same. So. $80 million could go to one contractor that's from Atlanta. That's an economic impact. A tax revenue is the money we get back to pay for this thing. We're going to spend $30 million and get 10 back. We're going to be $20 million in the hole. How are we going to make up for that? That's what I want to see. I hear you keep saying things about the floodplain, Mr. Penny. But as I've said, the, the amount of property that's going to be taken out is fairly small. And to spend this much money to take this much out, these are legitimate discussions we need to have. Boy, I don't I'm, want I'm it to not, be... I'm not, I'm not arguing you're with you. Snowing. I am not arguing with you as to whether, whether this project ought to be done or not. I, I will say this again. If this council decides that you don't want to proceed, 
That's all you got to say. When I walked into this door in July of 2019, they said, here's the project. And we've been, we've been doing that work since 2019 to look at the feasibility of the project. When the feasibility study came back, the feasibility study said the project was going to cost anywhere from 60 to 80 million dollars. That was a non-start. So then we talked about what do we need to do to still be able to move the project forward. So we came back to you and we shared with you what we could, what we could do. And that's the, that, that is the path that we are on. But the, at this point, the council is not committed to anything. <coughs> and so, so you can, if, if this council decides that you don't want staff working on this anymore, just tell me. And then I'll direct my staff resources someplace else. But that's all you have to say to me. You're not getting an argument from me. Uh, this is work that y'all, that was assigned to me and the staff when I walked in the door on July 1st, 2019. Do I think it could be significant? From what I see, I've seen the, what the private sector is working on. And if the things that the private sector is working on come to fruition, I think it will be a benefit to our community. I think it will be a benefit. And you haven't well, seen you all of that at this point. But, but if y'all want to decide today, it's okay. Is it something beyond the scope of what they've already uh, planned? I'm sorry. Is it beyond the scope of what they've already planned? The, I mean, they're building more than three stories now. Are they building something else? Yeah. I, I don't want to go into the, all the details, but I promise you, the Blue Mile Foundation. <laughs> You're saying things here in a public setting and then and then what? telling me my, my perception is off because but I don't right have now, all the details. Grant, anything else but grant money. That's free money. So I want to see what the free money can give us. When we yeah. get down to our money, then we can focus on is this feasible for us or not. But right now, we want free money. Am I correct? We use yes. grants. Okay. Now. I have a question. Um, so in order for us to accept these funds, we have to do a match. And what is the match? It's about five hundred. Five hundred thousand, a little over. But but again, it's coming from the chief loan, and the chief loan is that line of credit that we already have. Okay. Okay. And so, is it required? What the match? It is. Oh yeah. Okay. It is. Because I I was looking at the somewhere else. Somewhere it, it says it says encouraged, says, but, not encouraged but not required. That's part of the language somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. So that. So oh, I was as budget match. Match funds is encouraged but not required. Yeah. So what happens if we decide? What if you decide what? Uh, again, at this point, all you're doing is reserving these funds. You're accepting these funds. Right. And, and the actual, if, if we're required to put the match up, we have the match. And it comes from the G4. If we don't have to spend the match, we don't spend the match. We just spend, we just spend the grant funds. But at this point, if they need a match, we, we have the funds without using general fund dollars. We're simply using our line of credit. Right, I understand that. That's why I wanted to, the clarification, understand is the match required? Because the information that we got, it says that it's encouraged, but it's not required. Um, again, John, Jason, can you, can you add anything? My understanding is it does require the local match, and that's the language in the resolution. You get somewhere in the packet. I'm looking at it right here. But, yeah. But, but again, it's not additional money. And at some point, we can clarify. If you don't want to do it today, it's okay. I just want clarification because I believe Council Member Boyum's argument was that we were spending money. And I've seen here there could be a resolution that's saying it's not required. So I just, for me, it's just clarification. Okay. But well, Council Member Boyum's statement, and I won't speak for Council Member Boyum. Uh, but his statement is beyond. Right, no, I understand what? Okay. So for I me, think what, I'm sorry, hold for on. one second. For me, it's just clarification. Is it required or is it not required? Because it's coming to us that it's required, but I'm looking at something and, that, and, and, that is not well, required. Well, Ms. Ms. Mack, at this point, that is a that is a staff statement and maybe an erroneous statement. Okay. I would take for, I would, I would take, that's simply on a, on a, staff document that's not necessarily okay. in the agreement i would i would move forward with the fact that we would need to uh, provide a match but again that match would come from the chief alone okay so the match comes from the 
fifteen the million dollar gene pool on the right. Yes. Which, by the way, that's money we still have to pay back. Yeah. So, to answer Venus's question. That's still our money. It's not free money as we. And I'll say, should we not initiate the project at some point in time? Then we, we won't be drawing this single point. We won't draw these funds down. But, but for today, we're just um, reserving. We're just a, re a resolution of putting acceptance of, of grants. grants. Yes. Like we haven't even gotten to that part yet. We still on number eleven. No. For the question that I was asking, it would be tied in together, correct? Because if we accept the money, then we have to put the money out. So. I'm okay with it. I, I do want to make it clear that I am for right now the project, right now. But I just wanted that clarification. Well, but but again, you're not going to put any money out until we move forward with the project. At this point, you're just receiving the grant, the grant approval. We are committing the funds. If we take the grant, we have to spend that money. So we are committing at the some funds. point. That's right. At some point, mm -hmm. but not today. Probably right. maybe a couple of years out. Thank you, everybody, Council and Mr. Penny. Um, so y'all see that we don't meet in private and decide these things? We can't. I mean, any elected person can go to staff and ask questions independently, but we don't, the group of us don't get together and talk about these things because we can't. And so you get to sit through when we're hashing things out up here because that's what's required to keep the public informed of what your elected officials are trying to do on your behalf. So thank you, staff and council, for remembering that we do this and we do it respectfully. We're asking for information. We're all sincerely trying to do the best we can for the people of Statesboro, staff and elected people. So is there any further discussion that we need to cover about the um, acceptance of this plan or asking staff to move forward with it? Do you want, Mr. Boyer, are you thinking that you want to ask for an up, a moved up date or an update on the status of the project? That seems practical. I, I just want at some point, you know, Mr. Penny, I, I disagree with you when you said it was $60 million and it was, um, and it was that's a non-starter at that point. I, I disagree with you because ultimately the cost of the project is irrelevant if you have the revenues to pay for it. If we had a $60 million project that generated $10 million a year, we'd jump on that right now because we'll get our money back in six years. The problem is, is the return on investment. So it's not so much how, the, the project could cost any number. But it's what it returns, what it gives us back, that it that matters. Because 30 years is how long that Jeep loan is. So it's not just these people that are going to pay for it. It's going to be the entire next generation. So that's what we need to think about. It's not the cost of it up front. It's how do we pay for it down the road. So I, I appreciate what you say when you say oh, 60 million is too expensive. But uh, I, respectfully, I disagree with that philosophy because that's not how the city needs to look at it. We need to look at it from how does it generate, how do we put the money back? That's what we need to think about. And if we, if this project does not generate the money, then that's a, that's a problem. I understand on this and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna vote for this because I believe in the project, but I believe in the project being bigger than we're continuing to shrink it down and we're continuing to minimize the impact. And that is dangerous. Uh, and, we'll, and we will put our city it, in a situation where the entire region is growing. If we put ourselves in a bad financial position, we'll make ourselves even worse. I'm thinking long term. This is not short term. So, in that, in light of that, I'll make a motion to approve 2023-06. Second. Okay, is there any further discussion before we vote? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. So, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. We're down to item agenda item number 12, another happy um, thing for consideration. <clears throat> this is a motion to approve resolution 2023-07, a resolution establishing the States for a Youth Council. And so I'm very pleased to recognize, I see that we have Dr. Tina um, Patterson and is uh, Lakeisha, did Ms. Hill join us this morning? Okay, well, we want to recognize her, who has been leading the uh, youth Council for a couple of years and put in a lot of effort and also Dr. Lazara Mitchell who is here and has been hired to run our States for Youth Initiative and uh, has brought this forward as something that we should do to move forward. Do either of you have any comments? Please stand so we see who you are and appreciate you both. <laughs> we appreciate your efforts, uh, Dr. Patterson and Dr. Mitchell. Um, and so this is a resolution to establish the States for Youth Council. Do we need any further discussion or anybody have a chance to look at it? 
Okay, so I'll call for a motion to move forward on establishing a Statesboro Youth Council. So move. Second. Thank you. All in favor, aye, and raise aye. hand. Aye. Thank you. It passes unanimously. Next is a consideration of a motion to award the purchase of 11 vehicles to J.C. Lewis Board of States for at a total not to exceed price of $463,878 with approval to purchase from alternate vendor or vendors based on J.C. Lewis Board unit pricing in the event they cannot fill all of these vehicle purchases due to a lack of available inventory. Supply chain problems, Mr. Yeah, King? Yeah, uh, Mayor Pro Tem and, and members of the council. Um, typically, we would purchase these vehicles off state contract, but uh, what we've run into, I think we went out two times for bids for these vehicles. If you purchase them off the state contract, delivery would be a year out. And so in this case, um, we've been able to identify through a uh, local dealership, uh, J.C. Lewis, uh, the vehicle being available. And so we received the quote from them. Uh, the cost for the vehicle is a little bit more than um, state contract, but again, uh, availability is an important map. And so even by uh, entering into discussions with them, these 11 vehicles, um, when, if you approve this, uh, I believe one of the ones that we were trying to get has already been sold. Uh, and so uh, I will tell you the market, the market in and of itself is, is a difficult piece. So we do recommend that you approve the purchase of these vehicles uh, that, that were in our um, CIP uh, for replacement vehicles. Uh, and, and again, uh, if for some reason, what we would ask is we've included them in our budget that if for some reason um, you can't get 11 vehicles from J.C. Lewis, that we would have the authority to, to continue looking at other vendors that could uh, provide those vehicles to us so that we can go ahead and get them into our, into our inventory. Will they be pre-approved at the same price? And we would not exceed the price that you that you will, will prefer. And are you going to be buying these all at once or over the course of the year? Uh, if we could get all 11 today, we would take all 11 today. And the, and the reason I ask is I, 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 I do see there's going to be a, that increase in costs and cars is going to come down later on this year. So. Yeah. And, and, and then when you look at it, we're in 2023, all these vehicles, I, I see one 2023 on here. And all the rest of them, I believe, are 2022s. But we do recommend approval. Thank you. Any further discussion? And if not, do we have a motion to approve? So Second. Second. All in favor, please signify by aye and raise hand. Aye. aye. Thank you. The motion passes. Agenda item 14, consideration of a motion to award a contract to D. Lance Souther Incorporated in the amount of $297,651.65 for the installation of 8,000 feet of four inch and two inch gas main on North Main Street, which is also Lakeview Road. This will serve Fern Hill Farm subdivision and will be paid for with natural gas fund operating revenue funds. Mr. King? Um, Mayor Pro Tem and members of the council, uh, this is a subdivision that you actually approved. It's an 80 lot subdivision uh, that uh, actually received um, uh, subdivision incentive um, grant. Uh, and so in order to, to extend gas out there, we've got to do this work. And so um, went through the bid process uh, and as you see, one bidder, uh, and, and the price is a little bit more than what we uh, would like, but in this market, uh, we believe that it is prudent to, in order to go ahead and get the gas installed to award this contract to um, the Salter Group. Uh, so we do recommend approval. Thank you. Any further conversation, discussion, Council? If not, do we have a motion to award this contract to the staff um, recommendation? So second. Second. All in favor, please signify by aye and raised hand. Aye. Thank you. The motion passes. 
Agenda item 15 is consideration of a motion to approve a contract in the amount of $906,898.70 with McClendon Enterprises for the West Main Street stormwater drainage improvements. This project is slated to be paid for by 2018 TSPAS funds. Do you need to know anything else, sir? Um, is it, I think it's that you said it all. We, re, we do recommend approval. Okay. Any discussion? If not, do we have a motion to approve? I do have one piece of discussion. Uh, Jason uh, uh, Boyles, um, what's the status of the the West Main uh, surface improvement? Don't we still have a grant floating around somewhere? We don't have a grant for West Main Street. Wait, don't we have a CFP then, maybe? Yes, we do have that. Okay. Because um, I, I know there's, I know there was sewer or water improvements, storm water improvements that we had to be due before, uh, before we improved the sidewalk, because there was fear that if we redid the roads, that it would crumble some old pipes underneath. So I'm just curious what the status of that is because the East Main was done what, almost 10 years ago now. Uh, at least 10 years ago. Oh yeah, I guess right, 2010. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, design is either next fiscal year or the year after. Okay. Remember, it's coming up. It's, we have it, we pushed it out from a funding standpoint, but um, with renewal of T-SPLOS, we're able to keep that project going. Um, I don't know if I Bring that project back to life, I guess I should say. But what we we'll, what we we'll also do is um, go back and research it, and we we'll include a memo in the next FYI to be more specific. We we'll do that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you both. Any further discussion? Then I'll call for a motion, please. So, to approve. So. <laughs> Thank you. And a second. Second. All in favor, please signify by raised hands and aye. Aye. Thank you. Agenda item 15 passes unanimously. And we're down to number 16, which is other business from the city council. Do anyone up here have anything they'd like to share? John was not able to join us. Okay. Um, I would just like to personally remind everybody, y'all may know that there's a the CDC puts out this floating indicator about transmission of COVID, and you go from low and it's been going back up to medium, medium. Uh, spread. It used to be based on how many people were testing positive, but now because so many of us test privately at home with little, uh, little test kits that you can buy, they don't use that indicator anymore. It's based on deaths and it's based on how big the hospitals, how full the hospitals are of sick people. And we keep going back up to moderate spread. We'd all like it to be gone. We'd all like the return to normalcy, but there's still a lot of sickness out there. So take care of yourselves. If you haven't been vaccinated, I personally encourage flu vaccination and COVID vaccination and boosters. When you get out in crowded places, wear your mask. Do what you can to take care of yourself and help keep the spread down. Do we have any other business or personal comments anybody wants to make or updates? All right, then we move down to hear from Mr. Penny, the city manager's comments, please. Um, I don't have it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I know that's a problem. <laughs> Okay, well the next item on the agenda is public comments and we do have two people who have signed up in advance. I'll remind us all that we, we don't do like the county and have a big time clock clicking, but we are set, we're supposed to be public. Um, our guidelines are that we must allow a minimum of two minutes to anybody who signs up in advance and wants to come and address the council and the people who are here. So we will now call on Ms. Susan Riley who uh, her topic is procedures related to zoning and annexation. We'll ask Ms. Riley to speak first. Well, thank you. Here I am again. <laughs> um, well, I sent some very specific emails that I'm not going to drag out in front of this whole group. I know you guys can read. I do want to go over a few points, though, that I think are very, very important. Number one, the entire new procedure of annexation that was done on 117.23 violates the very essence of a Georgia law called 3666-4. You can read it. Mr. Kane, I'm sure, has read it. Uh, the detailed report that was required in 36-36-35 to be available to the public 14 days prior to the annexation hearings, non-existent, was not there. Not there for you, not there for us. 
the requirement contained in 3636111 to notify the school system. Not done. For the past two weeks, multiple communications were made with the owner's rep, Joey Maxwell, but this information was withheld from our neighborhood group. I spoke personally with Joey, who I've known and taken care of him and his family for many, many years, and he validated this. He and his wife, Suzanne, are in California right now where he said he would come and testify to that fact. I tried to speak with the attorney as soon as I found one of these mistakes. He told me because of his professional duties he could not speak with me. Yet when one of the press people spoke with him, he gave them a comment saying that this proceeding will not be voided. I don't think that's fair. We shouldn't, if there's one comment, it should be for everybody, not some things for the developers, some things for the press, and then neighborhood groups cannot get the same information. Questions to ask. Okay, looking over the past six months from the best I can determine, you guys have approved and rezoned one 1,100 new homes in six months from high, lower density to higher density projects. Tonight on the agenda is another hundred, many more in the works. So my questions, is anybody really counting? Is there a formula to go by to see what, how many more housing units it takes to get to need more EMTs, more police, more hospital beds, more classrooms, and more teachers? To say I'm disappointed is an understatement. I ask you to void the vote on Beasley Road as you're legally obliged to do since it wasn't done following the law as it states. To step back and slow down the zoning requests and annexation till they're fully researched and forms are completely filled out in such a way that it's not simply a cut and paste type of form. If I could find these two er these areas myself as a nurse, okay, in two hours of going online on, on public, public uh, Georgia code, Lexus, I, I imagine there's a lot more stuff that some legal expert needs to go through to make sure that the process we're doing is right, fair, and thorough, thorough. The vast majority of residents don't have the time or inclination to follow up on proceedings of their lawmakers or to read small legal notifications in the newspaper. This is why they entrusted you, their elected officials, to do this for them. I respect and I can see from today's discussions that you are here to do that, but you depend upon the staff not to be rushed as they have been and overburdened to give you full complete reports. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Um, the second person who signed up and wants to address us today is Blake Robinson, and the topic is Introducing Eagle Advocates. Good morning, members of the City Council and everyone else, because this is more of a public comment for <clears throat> everyone. Uh, with me today is my other officer, this is Ciara Childs, and um, we're introducing Eagle Advocates. It's a new organization, well, not new, but it's an organization that's coming back to Georgia Southern, and it's an organization that's dedicated to, uh, well, our mission is educate, inform, and empower. And what we want to do is we want to educate members of the community and students especially on their rights as citizens, and we'd love to be able to work with the city council and to work with the school districts to get into the school districts and talk with uh, students and uh, high school students specifically and educate them about what the rights they have going into this world as adults is. And so I just wanted to introduce, I mean, I know y'all all know me, <laughs> um, but I also wanted to introduce the, uh, my vice president, CR. Sierra Charles, hi. My name is Sierra Charles. I am a senior at Georgia Southern University here in Statesboro. I do graduate this upcoming May. My major is political science, concentrated in law and politics, minor in public policy, and I was able to complete the recent paralegal certification 
hosted by Dr. Maureen Stubb at the university, which was very great and eye-opening. I was conjoined with Mr. Blake Robinson to help this mission of advocacy in our community and in our schools. As you all know, advocacy and knowing our rights and laws are pivotal for generations to come, for they are our future. Thank you for having us. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And so that's why I just wanted to let y'all know that hopefully over the next few uh, months, because we're starting to come build back up, because we're not registered yet, there's a whole process on, on campus that we have to go through. But once we do get registered next year, I mean, Ciara won't be there, but she's hoping to lay the groundwork for it. So next year we'll be able to really take off running and hopefully work with members of the city council um, and just the city staff in general, because there's a lot of stuff that I know that your staff does, Mr. Penny, that is quite important to the city and I'd love it if that kind of if we could be we would be able to educate the community and Georgia Southern students about the work that y'all do so thank y'all for having us and thank y'all for the work you do thank you Mr. Robinson thank you Mr. Giles appreciate you doing it okay do we have anyone else um no one else signed up for public speaking today thank you both for coming and addressing us um and now we are ready to move into an executive session to discuss personnel matters in accordance with OCGA 50-14-3B. So that means we have a 10 minute recess while y'all all leave us and can we close the doors and go into executive session. Let's make a motion for that. But we need a motion to do that. Yes. Thank you, Leo, for moving us straight. We have a motion for executive session. Second. Aye. 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 Thank you. 10 minute recess while we clear the